Firstly, I think it's very unlikely that her problems are due to calcium deficiency as such. It sounds much more likely that it's something she was born with and that it's a degenerative disorder. We spent many years because of her. We didn't know what was the cause of her terrible pain until we discovered that one of her ankle bones had come out at one side. We're aware. We're aware that the authorities could catch up with us at any time. On our way to see another group of patients, we're warned that the Communist Party internal security is on our tail. We rapidly make our escape. In villages near the test zone, we've seen cases of children with terrible deformities. To find out if their suffering is caused by the radioactive contamination, we need to get hold of the Chinese authorities' own medical papers. Our search for evidence takes us to the region's capital city, Urumqi. We know we can't stay here long. It's not a popular tourist attraction. Despite the risk, it's time for Anwar to begin his undercover search for medical documents. We give him a concealed camera to record onto video any documents he can obtain. To avoid creating any suspicion, Anwar tells the other medics he's researching a doctoral thesis on cancer. They must not suspect what he's up to. Under constant threat of being denounced as an imposter, Anwar starts to trawl through the documents. He knows that if he's found out, he'll face a 20-year prison sentence. While he continues to search for statistics in Uruchi, we receive important news from a contact. In the south of Xinjiang province, there are senior doctors willing to talk to us. To avoid attracting any attention, we play at being tourists. Then we hear from our contact. For the first time ever, doctors in Xinjiang are prepared to speak out about the effects of the nuclear tests on their region. They know they are taking a huge risk talking to foreigners. To protect them, their identities are heavily concealed. All I can say is that the chemotherapy department at the hospital is very, very busy. 90% of the patients have blood cancers or lymphatic cancers. Basically, cancer is everywhere in Xinjiang. The increase has been dramatic over the last 20 years or so, particularly in the south. We often see children here under the age of 12. They have lung cancer or liver cancer. We see both types in children of this age. The doctors confirm that cancers are rapidly increasing in Xinjiang. And what's even more disturbing, many of these cancers are among the young. This 26-year-old woman has bowel cancer, rare in a young person. But she lives in Kola, the nearest city downwind of the nuclear test site. The local hospital couldn't find what the problem was for a long time and the pain gradually got worse and worse. Yes, the first time I had an operation. I don't really know what happened. But after the operation, I still felt ill. After radiation exposure, one of the cancers which appears most quickly is leukemia. If there are more people getting leukemia, it will be a strong indication of the effects of the nuclear explosions.
There are no statistics for leukemia here, but as far as we can see, more and more people are getting it. The number of people who have it now is much higher than before. This young boy is seriously ill with leukemia. His skin is covered in black marks as a result of the disease. Many families have children with blood cancers, but they can't go to hospital. Blood cancers are difficult and expensive to treat, so many people just die. Some of the people are diagnosed, but then realize they can't afford the treatment, so they leave. The doctors we meet are convinced that radiation from the nuclear tests is responsible for the increasing rate of cancer among these young people. But they also say the Chinese state is blocking all access to the truth. The nuclear explosions have caused increased air and water pollution. We can't do research into it. It's not allowed. We can't do any of the research. Back in Urumqi, we meet up with Anwar again. He's managed to smuggle out a batch of documents from the hospital. Our excitement of getting hold of them is mixed with anxiety over the increased risk. Among Anwar's Hall, there are many scientific papers, but they all contain the same blanket denials. According to the Chinese, the nuclear bombs did not cause any radiation contamination in the Silk Road towns. And there were no ill effects for the local population. But evidence from the international scientific community shows this to be untrue. Fallout from Chinese nuclear tests was detected 5,000 miles away, even in Britain. We spend the night sifting through piles of documents. Suddenly we get a break. A scientific paper from the epidemiology department of Xinjiang Medical College it says that here in Urumqi, the largest city near the test zone, the number predicted to die from cancer is going to virtually double between 1993 and the year 2000. An extraordinary increase. We record the sensitive documents onto videotape so we can smuggle them out as tourist film. We are now determined to get hold of further documentary proof. Anwar decides to take a huge gamble. He asks his contact directly to get him access to a specific, highly confidential document. He knows that any one of them might betray him to the police. To avoid any suspicion, we return to our role as tourists. <laughs> Kashgar, where the silk roads of China converge. In summer, it is the highlight of any tourist trip. They come to see the rich oasis culture of the Uyghur people. Chinese nuclear bombs have been detonated in their homeland. <laughs> 